of identifying the different categories we wanted to compete in, so free ride, all mountain, and backcountry touring. Um, so with the free ride skis, we kind of built off the popularity of the Nomad. You know, this has been our number one selling ski, the 105. Yeah. So instead of having multiple <coughs> models in this in a free ride collection, we decided just to build it. So new for this year, we have the Nomad 95, which is kind of our. Um, you know, it's good for all mountain free ride as well as train got, park. You've got camber. You show them back to back. So it has two millimeters of camber. So just minimal camber underfoot. A um, little bit of early rise in the tip and tail. Um, so when you're skiing up flat, just really fun, playful ski, but you roll it on edge, you get full edge contact and it can lock up. Um, so this is a good replacement for our, you know, park specific Denali as well. Um, so it's a good free ride tool that's good in the train park. Yeah, it's good, good width for Australia too. Yeah, the 105, like I said, this has been our top seller. It has the same rocker profile as the, these three all have the same rocker profile. Um, so like I said, bread and butter, just a good, fun, all mountain free ride tool. New. The 115. New. Yeah. Yep, new for this year, the 115. So a little bit wider, uh, you know, good for free ride, you know, more of a big mountain application. Um, and then lastly, we have this new Nomad 125, which is really the same shape and design as the Gypsy was last year. So instead of having that little bit of camber underfoot, this one is fully rockered, yeah. but the radius of the rocker is the same as the side cut radius. So it just skis like it's flexed. Yeah. So you ski it flat really playful and fun, you roll it on edge, you get full edge contact and it locks up. Yeah, it it shocks me. Smashing trees in Japan on that. Definitely. Yeah, I was last week. Because they turn like crazy. Yep, yeah. we were there last week and yeah. that's what I was skiing on. So now new for this current season was the Pioneer and this was a, just a good introduction to our brand. You know, it's, a, it's in the all mountain collection so these skis are designed powerful, versatile, responsive. That's what they're designed to do. So this Pioneer 96, um, this is just a good introduction to our brand. Um, 9600 foot, it has four millimeters of camber, so a little bit more explosive edge to edge, early rise in the tip and tail, and then the tapered tip and tail shape. So really easy to turn, really easy to ski, um, lower price point, so just a good introduction to get on. You can get a variety of customers on it at a good price and uh, still has good performance. So then new this year, we've introduced the um, Pioneer 109. So a little bit wider, um, it's a stiffer flex, so just a really powerful all-mountain tool. It carves extremely well, blasts through crud, um, just, a, just a charger pretty much. I think the Pioneer will eventually become our top selling models. Um, so then new for this season, we've introduced the Sabre series, and this is kind of replacing the Shaman and Pilgrim. So this is more of our front side, carve, directional ski. Um, full camber underfoot, so really explosive edge to edge, uh, 23 millimeters or centimeters of early rise in the tip, and then more of a flat traditional tail. So it has a little bit of kick just to get it now turns a little easier. Um, but this comes at an 89 and 99 millimeter waist. Um, yeah, it's not the lightest, but it's not, not the heaviest either, but... Uh, you can put any metal in any of your skis? Or no metal. Nope. Instead of metal, we, we have three layers of rubber in the ski. Um, you know, multiple layers of tracks, fiberglass, so it's a really torsionally rigid, damp, powerful ride. But yeah, no metal through, through any of the skis. Um, so yeah, the 99 version, same shape, just great for crud. We call it our crud bust and carver. You can just lay it over in any condition and just rail. Um, really a fun yeah. ski. That's why I'm skiing most of the time. Good awesome ski. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. A lot of crud, but also yeah, wide enough to go anywhere as well. Yeah, it really does. Um, so then this is our back backcountry touring collection. Um, and for years, I was trying to figure out how to really lighten up the ski but keep the durability that we're known for. Yeah. So we're working with a company in Switzerland called B Comp, and we've introduced it's called the Acroma Core, and it's a combination of balsa and flax. So it's it's vertically laminated strips of balsa, but each one of the strips, the grain is going in a different direction. So the grain's going zero, 90, zero, 90, zero, 90. And then the, the flax is at a 45 in between each of those layers. So it just creates a torsion box. And that was the only change that we made in this ski was the core. We didn't have to add any metal to the ski. We just changed the core and the rest of the layup and our materials are the same. And it cut 30% of the weight. So it's a, it's a yeah. lightweight, well, it's touring, it's good. Uh, you know, big 40 millimeters or, or 40 centimeters of early rise in the tip, um, camber underfoot, more of a flat traditional tail. Um, just a great touring ski, backcountry touring specific. Who does all your graphics? 
Um, his name's Travis Parr, so that was one of the things that we changed this year is before we'd come up with an annual theme that would um, shape the direction of the line um, in terms of marketing and graphic approach, but I mean it kind of alienated some customers because if you didn't like the style that year, you didn't like anything, yeah. so this year we really tried to segment and do different design um, styles for each of the different categories. Yeah, that's really cool graphic. Thanks. Yeah, the, the performance-wise, light, fast, and durable. That's what we're, we're marketing as. And then in terms of the art, we came up with different words for part to create the art. So this one was like adventure, technical, nature. Um, Are you guys you know, have the chess? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, probably good to try a couple. Have you got, like I said, you're over in Japan. Did you do, 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 you do shoots? If we can access oh, photos? Yeah, we can access them and Easy. bang a shot free. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where about you? Uh, well, that one was actually Steam, but we were in uh, Cortina. Yeah, this is a. Uh, in uh, where? It was Cortina and the Hakuda. Oh, like, Cortina. Did you get snow? You did, yeah. Yeah, just, it, was, yeah. it only just snowed. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was actually it's really good. Ridiculous. Or was it? I guess it was it. That was great snow. Yeah. Uh, have... Gosh, the monkeys are crazy. Monkeys. Yeah, I like that one. It's uh, <laughs> just crazy. I know they do is sit there and bonk each other. And... Yeah, because it's more like all that spreading shit should be covered. Yeah, exactly. It's like probably snowbox a meter or two down or down there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll set, like we'll create just a drop box with all a bunch of photos. 